Hello, my friends. Holy cow, it's been a minute since I've just sat down and like made a normal video. I guess I'm not sitting, I'm walking, as you can tell, in the woods. But yeah, I have been wanting to make this video for a second now, so I figured why not just start it and have to deal with it and do it. Which this video is going to be about cutting cords with people, specifically when you've had intimate connections with somebody, whether that's just emotional intimacy, sexual intimacy, any of that sort. And you want to be done with the connection. You want to send energy back to sender in the least malicious way where it's like, listen, I want to deal with what I'm dealing with and not everything you're dealing with on top of that. Boom, this video is for you because that's what cutting cords does. Basically in all seriousness, if you have a connection that you no longer want to have your energy put into and you notice that it's a little out of control with how it is being put into it. For example, think about the difference between like a stranger and your best friend. Obviously, if your best friend does something to you, you're going to kind of hang on to that a little bit longer and it's going to affect you a lot differently versus if a stranger were to do something for you because you're like, oh, well, it's just a stranger. That's because you don't have an energetic bond with the stranger. If you have an energetic bond with people, that's where things get messy. And that's essentially what I'm here to help you with today is understanding how to cut some of those cords that you create with people through those energy bonds and hopefully help you realize that you are in a lot more control of the situation than you might feel like you are at times. So how do you know if you have an energetic bond with someone? Well, honestly, the easiest way to tell is to try to stop thinking about them or having them come up in your psyche in any way. And if you can't stop that, you probably have an energetic bond with them. Energetic bonds a lot of the time are what people call telepathy or just really being in tune with another person's energy. And that can happen through choice as much as it is just like destiny and fate. You know, if we entertain an energy enough, not only do we open our psyche to that energy, but that psyche is open to our energy. There's an energy exchange that is happening in those moments. If anything that initially turns out to be like a connection or chemistry as we might call it or sometimes just love all of that can be synonymous with this energetic bond you might feel but honestly hate and discourse with someone has the same kind of energy it's all something that's being sent and received through different energy connections obviously most of the time when a connection is going good you don't really care to cut the cord because it's benefiting you to be sharing energy with somebody however when you get to a point where you want to either break up with someone or just cut cords because the energy has gotten to be too toxic in whatever situation you're in or not even just that maybe you just don't want all your energy going into this one outlet so that's why you would cut a cord which that process is actually a lot more simple than you might expect it to be And let me explain really quick what I mean about kind of becoming the karma and sending energy back to sender because that sounds a little malicious, but it's really not. So the thing about being in an energetic connection with somebody is that energy is always changing. There's always a push and pull going on. Hence why experiences of like unrequited love are a thing. Or you hear about like the runner and chaser dynamic. I mean, the twin flame journey in its essence is pretty much this idea that relationships are a push and pull constantly. Now that being said, over a long period of time, there will start to be imbalances in a lot of more unhealthy relationship dynamics where there isn't great reciprocity and everything like that. And that can kind of lead into what I call a vacuum effect, which is one person is kind of sucking all the energy from the relationship while another person is giving all the energy to relationship. which leaves a really uncomfortable feeling within the relationship dynamic. Like both parties will feel unsatisfied and unfulfilled, hence where breakups happen. Basically, if the energetic connection you have doesn't have the right flow of reciprocity, this creates this tumultuous energy of, well, I feel like I'm giving so much but receiving none in return. Because quite literally, your role is now defined by how much you're giving and the other person benefiting from how much you're giving or vice versa, you know, depending on how the relationship dynamic is going. Because even if you're the giver in the relationship, or the chaser, chances are there's something that you aren't giving to the relationship, like, I don't know, space, freedom, time to just experience what's happening and unfolding in front of you. Yeah, there's a lot to it. Nobody's clean here. But we all can help ourselves by recognizing when this happens and doing some 
cord cutting ceremonies or rituals or whatever you want to call them and essentially call your energy back to yourself so when you're in this vacuum dynamic which is where things like i said get tumultuous in relationships it's the same sort of situation that starts stemming resentments because like i said your needs are not getting met you both will feel unfulfilled yet you're both feeling like you're kind of doing your part in a way and i think we all know what it feels like to leave a situation in hindsight is 2020 so cutting cords sets you up for that the way that cutting cords ends up sending energy back to sender is because you decide that you are no longer going to take accountability for somebody else's energy and matching it and creating a kind of dynamic with that energy. No, instead you are taking, like I said, sole responsibility for yourself and working on your own energy and working on fulfillment in your personal energy dynamic. So for example, let's say you are trying to cut energy cords with somebody who is taking up a lot of your emotional energy. Like you feel like you are giving everything to this person emotionally trying to help them and try to be their stability and they're just not doing that work they're not putting it back in to your relationship or even into themselves hence where there becomes a vacuum of emotional energy so at this point if you were to cut the cord and then follow through with that intention you would then find yourself in the situation of now having all of your emotional energy back that you were putting into someone and it wasn't being really appreciated yeah now that is all back to you and you get to experience the positives of your own emotional energy you get to start reaping your own benefits which then you might find that the other person is starting to reap some karmic issues that come up from them not dealing with energy for so long and especially with you no longer there to fill the void and do the work for them thus it can be kind of a wake-up call to both parties when this happens because not only will you realize how much of your power you were giving up but i can tell you for sure that the person on the other end of the stick is definitely feeling the power that they are losing because they don't have you to lean on anymore this is super powerful for codependent connections so Trust me, if you follow these two little skills that I'm about to tell you on how to cut cords, you're gonna reap some benefits, I promise. The lighting for this video is absolutely horrific, but we are just gonna finish it up and go with it. So two things that you can do to cut cords. Number one is the easiest one I would say, and is definitely the easier one to use just on a moment's notice. And that is just a general visualization of white light around you that not only helps with cutting cords, but also helps with just psychic protection in general. So what you would do for this is wherever you're at, it doesn't really matter. You just kind of go within yourself and imagine Imagine a white light stemming from your heart area all the way out and basically just let that white light cleanse your entire energy from your head to your toes and have it even extend all the way up to the heavens and all the way down to the core of the earth and just feel yourself feeling that cleanse of energy. That's the funny thing about magic and intention is that it's literally the same thing if you intend for energy to move in a certain way and really put your will into that. What do you know you get to see magic work right in front of you? An example of this working out well for me is one time I was out to dinner at this bar and there was people coming up to me that were just making me feel some type of way. And it's not exactly what I would call an energetic connection. I'm just a psychic and I'm open to people's energy really easily. So it was one of those things that that I was feeling some type of way around these people, just got a bad vibe and I instantly just went in myself, did that little cleanse, a burst of like white light energy coming from within me and I instantly felt better. I felt way more in control of the situation. I didn't feel scared or anything or nervous or any of that. Like it just completely dissipated and it was just because I was realigning myself with this intention of protection and divine support basically. And especially in such a stimulated world that we live in, it's really easy for your energy to be kind of porous, to kind of fall into different energies around it. So the more that you can kind of set yourself straight and do some cord trimming if you will and just kind of make sure that you know you're not getting too swayed by anything around you and you stay within your own energy bingo that's where you want to be because that is going to make sure that the cords that you're forming with things around you are intentional they're not just you becoming attached to things unconsciously which is where trouble starts to hit let me tell you all right in the second and more formal method that i have for cutting cords and how i normally do this is I have a black candle that I use. It's got a little stand that I put it in. And essentially, I light the candle, which I will in a second, but I normally have some kind of thought prepared, I should say, like obviously some kind of intention of what cord I'm trying to cut and what I'm trying to gain back as well. So for instance, let's say that I am trying to cut a cord with a friend or something like that. This is just for practice purposes. I'll explain what I do. So let's say, 
I'm sitting here and I'm noticing that, like I was saying earlier for my example, like maybe I'm putting a lot of emotional energy into this friend and it just doesn't seem like anything is coming back. I can then be like, you know what, I'm deciding to take my emotional energy back from this relationship and any other power that I had lost. Basically, I would just like to call that energy back to myself, which in turn can cut this cord with this person, say their name. And we can both continue to focus on ourselves and go through our lives with more power and ability to have healthier connections. I like to leave in that little well wish at the end because like I said, this isn't to do anything malicious. It really is truly to just bring your power back to yourself and honestly bring power back to another person because to be in these unhealthy dynamics and to actually feel the need to cut a cord with somebody normally means that you both have some healing you need to do outside of this relationship and there's no shame in that at all. I should also say I've also done this before where I wrote somebody's name on a piece of paper and burned it which honestly I find all works the same because truly the common denominator is really boiled down to your will your intention and an act of transformation to get the ball rolling which fire is not only symbolic of transformation but also spiritual energy we love to see it back to my example if I want to cut this cord I would light this candle I would call upon my spirit guides so just like this just saying hey spirit guides this is me because I'm 100% that bitch that just talks to my spirit guides like they are normal human beings so hello my highest spirit guides and my higher self and the universe I am here to set my intention to cut the energetic cord in my relationship with Joe Smo through doing this I intend to bring back my emotional power and to start reaping the positive benefits of all that I've put into this relationship I take the energy back to myself and send the energy back to Joe Smo in hopes that we can continue on our highest journeys and heal and grow from this connection we've had with each other so be it and so it is and there you have it that is how I cut cords and become living karma just by owning my own shit just by saying you know what I don't want to deal with this anymore so I'm going to focus on myself and I'm going to help you focus on yourself by not being so intertwined with this energy that is really not helping either of us as much as we think it might be. And boy, oh boy, the power you will feel moving forward, especially the longer that you hold on to your intention and keep acting within that power. That's why your willpower is so important here. Because if you were to just do this and then go and watch a tarot reading about them, I mean, that really shows that your willpower is lacking because your follow through is just absolutely not there however if you let these ceremonies empower you you know the universe is going to support your beliefs and truly 99 percent of the time i've seen that be the case actually i don't think i've ever not seen that be the case i mean when i do this this is a very powerful ceremony because the universe knows that i'm serious i know that i'm serious and thus my energy knows that i'm serious because it pulls away so quickly and boy when i tell you i see the wheel turn that we'll be turning. But thank you guys so much for watching this video today. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you comment down below some questions or ideas that you have. Give this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe to this channel for more pizzazzy jazz like this. Otherwise, I'm going to skedaddle and I'll see you guys in a later video. Peace.